actress and amazing human being, Tara Strong, slums it with us. We play Damn You Autocorrect, raise a ton of money for the Hartman House and a very, very good cause this Thanksgiving, and play a super over overly complicated game where a bunch of made-up voices are said for your pleasure. It's all coming up along with musical guest Jackie Lipson on this episode of NSFW Show. Did you almost forget the second time to mention the musical guest? <laughs> nope. That was artfully done where I looked like I said like you would have been better off with the first take and just editing you say, in saying, by the way, also Jackie also Lipson. Jackie Lipson. <laughs> musical and musical guest, Jackie Lipson. Uh, actually, Stop here. This. And musical guest, Jackie Lipson. Uh, Tara, if you don't mind just saying uh, uh, internet hosts are whack, we'll edit that in. We'll have Tony put that in for the title. That internet hosts are whack. There's got to be a spell in here somewhere to fix them. Yes! <laughs> awesome. Very well done. Everyone's asking me to do it in Harley's voice. Mr. J, I hope nobody gets hurt except for the Batman. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is amazing. You want to know what? I just realized I uh, a couple of friends of mine are obsessed with Marvel versus Capcom and I've I've been and, and my one friend plays as X23 constantly. So I've just been listening to you shoot power punches at my friend for the last two months. Yeah, those games are, um, they can be challenging sometimes to do punching and death sounds over and over for four hours. <laughs> but um, I don't know if we're still in the air, but I have to say the gaming fans are just amazing. You know, I think that they really feel like they're in the game with you and they connect with you. And when, I'm, when I've got a session that's like a thousand cues, like Final Fantasy or something like that, I just think of the fans really getting in and feeling like they're part of it and going to Comic-Con and social media, Twitter and all that stuff. Really, it's like so nice to connect with them. So thank you guys for having me on. Now, now do you, uh, do you uh, when you're doing a, you're doing a, video, a game, video game, I'm here myself for some reason. Uh, when uh, you, I can't. I can't. You try talking. Mm. Well, it's not ha okay. Now it's not happening. Okay. Uh, <laughs> When you're recording a uh, a video game, do you have to record like just orders of magnitude more lines than for a uh, traditional narrative? Because obviously in video games, especially like a Final Fantasy thing, there's so many different possibilities and characters. You have to record lines that you know the odds are will never be heard by most players. It's insanely different. Like when you're doing an animated series, first of all, any voiceover session they have you up to four hours, and for an animated cartoon, it's usually you and all the other actors. And it's so much fun and it's collaborative. I mean, if the guy ever sold the outtakes from the Powerpuff Girls and you heard what me and EG said to each other in our voices, it would be very hilarious. Same with Fairly Odd Parent Sessions. We're always very kibitzy and playing off each other. And you get breaks in between because you're talking to each other. And when you're doing a game, it's just you for four hours straight. And sometimes it can be um, vocally really challenging, like screaming noises and death noises and... Um, even if it's like a whole pile of lines that you have to say maybe three times to have coverage and make sure it covers a whole bunch of different, um, you know, scenarios. And something like Final Fantasy, for example, the scripts were like storyboards. If you've seen storyboards from films, sure, sure. they were so big. <laughs> and sometimes I'll meet the fans at Comic-Con and they'll say, remember in scene? <laughs> like, yeah, right. I, I can't remember. I'm so sorry. But I do know that it, in every moment... I'm picturing every moment in my head and how it should look. And any great voiceover artist will tell you they've heard people say, oh, isn't voiceover just reading? I can do that. And it's really not. It's imagining every moment and being in every moment so that the fans can connect to it. And like I said, feel like they're in the game with you and feel like they're part of it. And it's nice now that um, the game industry as a whole, you know, hires really great voice talent and voice directors, and I think it makes a difference. Now, does it drive you nuts that uh, some of the bigger blockbuster uh, animated features will go for a more popular actor's name to to kind of capitalize on their brand value rather than going with somebody who's more committed to the craft of storytelling? Let me think about In that. An yes! <laughs> <laughs> it drives me crazy. When they're good, Robin Williams... In Aladdin, genius. Tom Hanks, I get it. When they're mediocre or, you know, a, a celebrity that kids might not care about, it really drives me nuts. I've been in casting sessions or rooms where they're like, oh, we got so-and-so from The Office. Like, 
you know yeah. I'm sure kids don't care at all and they're paying more money and I, I do think it's I mean I actually got the chance to um, direct this past year and really saw um, how that all happens and you know a lot of times they'll be for promotional they'll want to bring in an on-camera celebrity which again kids don't care about and so at this last casting session I did I brought in you know Tom Kenny who does Spongebob and Kevin Michael Richardson on all these great voiceover performers and the cast then the producer said it's weird it seems like everybody that hugs you does really well <laughs> and I said that's because you're asking a tap dancer to do ballet and a lot of people coming from on camera that have never done animation really freak out when they see, like you said in the beginning, how versatile some of us are and how crazy we get and um, just knowing what to do in an animated session. Like if the line is, whoa, we're going to know the difference automatically from someone falling off a building or someone thinking someone looks hot, you know? Right. <laughs> Whereas sometimes an on-camera person's like, Where, where's my eye line? <laughs> so, so you mentioned Tom Kinney, which, uh, which I, I first became hip to back when he was doing Mr. Show. And I, I remember finding it so hilarious to me that that you know he's best known as being the voice of spongebob whereas he did some awesomely filthy stuff on mr show do, do you run into any situations where you have to watch uh what you say or what projects you uh get associated with outside of of animated features because usually they're you know applied for children uh probably like the dirtiest show and i see your chat rooms talking about it is um drawn together which was an animated version of the real world and I know that you didn't see it because you didn't know any of my No, I show. definitely did watch Drawn T Together. I did on, see uh, they're yeah. Drawn Together. No, I love Drawn Together. I enjoyed that one. <laughs> and, you know, because I do so many kids' shows and I love to do kids' shows, it was really fun to get in the studio and sing with Cree Summer about making out with a black chick. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. Black chick's tongue was genius. And um, it's funny, when I first played it for my mom, she was in Canada, she started to cry. And she's like, this song is so beautiful. <laughs> And I'm like, all right, I'm awesome. to the words here, mom. <laughs> but um, yeah, so that's really, really fun for me. And um, I do have boundaries with that because so many of my fans are children. And, um, you know, a friend of mine was producing a film and they like, they really want you for this horror movie. And there's some um, nudity in it. And I said, you know what, guys, I go have a great shoot. I just can't have 10 year old girls downloading my boobs. Sorry. <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> uh, and now, yeah, I'll tell you what. You have, you have to have a code. I have the same thing. I don't want any of my fourteen-year-old girlfriend downloading my move. My moves. <laughs> so, so uh, when when was the first awakening? Because uh, I know uh, you mentioned that you sort of came to understand that you could have a whole career doing animated voices. Was there a crystallizing moment when you're like, "I love doing this, and I could make a whole career out of doing exactly this"? You know. Um, I have to say, when I booked Hello Kitty, it was really, really exciting. That was my first job. And then I did Beetlejuice. Hopefully the, some of the fans will remember Claire Brewster and Bertha. Um, and um, some really cool, you know, American-based projects of things that I knew and that I was fans of that became animated series. And the more I booked it, the more excited I would get. And to this day, when I book something, um, I get excited. You know, I think when I booked Batgirl, my agent called and said, oh my God, you're her, you're the bat, you're the girl, you're Batgirl. And we screamed. And yeah. that's still the case. And I love what I do. And um, I think that shows with any animated show is they're fun to watch because the actors have a lot of fun and they, um, you know, so grateful for the work. Anything I do, I get excited. You know, I just recently started doing um, the Napoleon Dynamite animated series, which is um, all the original cast from the Napoleon Dynamite film and me. Wow. <laughs> so when I booked that, I was like, oh my God. And to sit in the room, you know, with John Heater and uh, Haley Duff and all these amazing talent. It's just so much fun. And every script is laugh out loud funny. Um, so again, every, every job is specifically exciting for me in a different way. Like I mentioned the Little Mermaid. I don't know what little girl didn't want to be the Little Mermaid, but hmm. um, I still have like the poster hanging in my room. Um, in my childhood room in Toronto, and when I met Jodie Benson, I burst into tears. <laughs> oh my like, gosh! You okay? And I'm like, I've just loved you for so long. And then you know, getting to sing in the studio with her was totally surreal. So I knew like <clears throat> early on that it was a very uh, special part of the entertainment industry. Um, and I didn't really know how lucrative it would be. Like people used to say to me, "Oh, you're on the Rugrats. You must be making so much money." And I. I said, I don't know. And the truth is, I don't. I, it's nice 
to have a nice paycheck, but I never know what I'm making initially, and I just do this because I love it so much. So, was there, and, and I don't, if you don't want to name names, I totally understand. But was there a project that you started? You're like, well, this will go nowhere, and then you were shocked to see how how long it lasted or how successful it became. I'm usually really good at calling a hit. I knew Teen Titans was going to be incredibly successful um, because it was such a magical room. I knew Powerpuff Girls was going to be big, but I didn't know how big. You know, when we first started out, I'm like, this is hilarious. We're being chased by broccoli. And then every kid had the backpack. So um, I didn't know that that was going to be, you know, I didn't know that um, My Little Pony was going to take off so much. And Holy crap. It's like a phenomenon, this pony thing. All over Twitter with the bronies and the um, adult fans that are like, I'm sorry, I have to admit, I'm a fan. I'm like, I love that you're a fan. I I mean, when I was a kid, I had a bunch of My Little Pony toys. So, um, yeah, I didn't know that that was going to be as big of a hit as it was. And then I've got shows that I thought would continue forever, um, like Symbionic Titan, which you guys don't know, but my fans... No, actually, I do. I do. See, what's (laughs) funny is all the ones you say I don't know, because I see the ads for that one while my daughter watches Boomerang all the time. (laughs) So, yeah, I kind of thought that was going to go on for a long time, because Gandhi Tartakovsky, who was one of the producers and creators... Samurai Jack, yeah. ...show Samurai Jack and Powerpuff Girls and Dexter's Lab, and I I really thought that was one of the shows that was going to keep going, and, you know... You just never know what's going to keep going. Teen Titans, I get fan mail every day. Please, can we have more Teen Titans? And I wish that was in my control because, truthfully, it was so much fun to do. And a lot of times I think the fans get disappointed when there's a show they love that doesn't keep going. And even Chowder, which, you know, you didn't know Truffles, um, Mm -hmm. that was incredibly fun to do. And I thought we'd get another few seasons out of that. But you never know what's going to keep going. Yeah. Yeah. I think if it were up to the fans... (laughs) <laughs> they would um they would keep going yeah cute wow. that my that the chat room thinks that's my bed that's my kid's bed that's <laughs> <laughs> it's a little tiny bed <laughs> <laughs> well I'll, I'll tell you what this uh this uh, is definitely you know especially with like the the animation thing you, you got to figure that as we go forward that it's something that will kind of come down in, in terms of how expensive it is uh, to make and, and voice talent, like you would kind of get more more opportunities. But um, I'm, I'm curious about the the video game voiceover stuff that you were talking about, because it, it seems like as, let's say, opportunities like the feature film stuff have kind of gone on this trend of going with, with actors, the, the video game market, as that's gotten more uh, you know, high-end and, and you have these blockbuster titles, that they are going for more kind of voice actors like you do you, I mean, do you see that those opportunities are increasing or uh, has that happened more over the last 10 years I would say like I said it's nice it's refreshing to see that they're going with union performers and um, really seasoned voice actors in the beginning it was harder to um, get the gaming industry to understand why it's good to have people that really know how to do voiceover and direct voiceover and I think the gaming industry as a whole has changed and grown so much. And I think the nice thing is they've grown with that trend. And I do think that major on-camera celebrities tend not to do it because it's so much work. And you can't get frustrated. You have to keep going even when there's a thousand cues because you still have to make it believable for everybody. And so they tend to not have the time and not be able to schedule the time. And I do think it's really nice that, they put that out there to um, voice talent. And you know, when I booked Harley Quinn, um, I worked alongside Arlene Sorkin in the animated series as Batgirl. And it was such an honor to step into that role. And then when I went to Comic-Con, and I'm sure some of the fans on your chat were there, uh, you can see these huge billboards for Arkham City. And even in, um, you know, in the streets of LA, there's huge billboards. And the graphics are incredible and all the voices are incredible. And I, I just think it's so nice that they do continue to hire talented voice performers for that. Yeah. Well, it, it seems like something that's only getting, only getting bigger and, and, you know, it, it, it very much seems like each release is, uh, you know, something that it's going to be a big, a big opportunity. And obviously the, the conversation of whether or not video games are the new kind of blockbuster franchise movies is something that's gone on, uh, forever, but it, it almost, in a way, seems like it's uh, 
you know, like the voice actor's revenge, you know, that, that now there's this whole other thing that is, uh, you know, not, you know, on the radar for the, the John Krasinski's of the world. But but rather the domain for for guys like like you that can really kill it and do a great job. Yeah, it's nice. It's rewarding and it's fun, and I think it'll continue to go that way. And um, I get excited too. And there's so many things that I can't talk about yet. And um, it's funny. Oh the come fans- on, talk about something. You can break some news. No <laughs> one's fan- listening. It's they funny. all left because that episode was so goddamn awkward. <laughs> but they all like this stuff. They love this stuff now, but yeah, but they're they're not. It's like four people. You can just break some news. It's fine. <laughs> no, I can't. Y'all, like, come you on. You know, anyways, watch. They know. Look, there's a game I'm not allowed to talk about yet. They'll they'll talk about it. That it, does it rhyme with Smart Wars: The Old Republic? <laughs> it could. It could. <laughs> Maybe. Hey, uh, one of the questions that I'm seeing a lot pop in the chat room is uh, for somebody who wants to get started in this line of work. What what advice do you give to youngsters getting started? I think it's really important, like I said, that people understand it's not just reading, it's um, acting. And so any kind of uh, classes you can get into locally, like acting classes, improv classes, singing classes. I can't tell you how many times I tap into stuff I learned in singing lessons, which I still take. Um, Not just for singing in animated parts, which happens quite a bit, but to warm up your voice for something that might be vocally stressful. And uh, I did the... I did a second city stuff in Toronto and all of that improv training really helps you in sessions. And then anytime you can get into um, a voiceover workshop or class where you get time to be on the mic to hear yourself and learn the different techniques. And I actually put out a CD, um, funny, it's like almost 10 years ago because I was pregnant when I did it called Voice Stars. It's voice stars with a Z dot com. And it's myself and... Uh, all the top voice talent and casting directors and show creators and SAG representatives and artists uh, talking about all the different little things you need to know about getting into the industry because so often people think, oh, I could do that. And to really do animation, you need to be in Los Angeles. So before someone moves there, they could do the Voice Stars um, you know, CD right at, in their home and at their computer in their pajamas and see, well, I don't think I could do this or I could because... Um, if you jump in too quickly and you're not ready, you quite often won't get another shot. Studios are expensive and they don't love to let in new people. I mean, there's always room for someone to raise the bar and for someone good to come in, but you don't want to try that until you're really at the top of your game. Because like I said, if you've wasted studio time or you seem insecure or you're not ready yet, they, you might not ever get another shot. So you want to be ready. Well, is that is that something that you think you know people could could take advantage of the fact that you know with with YouTube and and uh, you know internet distribution stuff? It seems like it, it would be a a great place for someone to kind of cut their teeth and and really uh, you know get a sense of what voiceover stuff is is all about in, in terms of getting involved in those projects. If you were starting your career over now, is it something that you would look to do, or do you think that that's kind of giving away stuff uh, for free that you could take other sort of avenues to get where you are now? I'm so confused. What the question is? <laughs> if you were restarting your career today, would you do uh, you know internet stuff and YouTube stuff for free, or or would you you know try and uh, book gigs like you had to get where you are now? Uh, oh, I see. So you're asking like people that do stuff for free to kind of get their feet wet. Yeah, yeah, to get their feet wet and 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 get a little under under their belt. But I think it's okay because. Truthfully, one of the reasons um, the greatest voiceover actors are so good is because they're doing it all the time. And there's techniques and there's things that you learn from being in the studio and from doing it over and over. So I don't think it's the worst thing. I don't think you can start a career that way. Like I said, it's better to get into classes, particularly um, voiceover classes that are taught by casting directors. Um, okay. Because a lot of people get their start that way. You know, uh, D. Ba- D. Bradley Baker, who is a genius voice talent, he's in everything you've ever seen, um, took a class with Chris Zimmerman, who is an incredible um, voiceover director, and she's like, who's this guy? And brought him in. So I wouldn't recommend taking from someone you've never heard of, uh, because unfortunately, as you know, in all parts of the entertainment industry, there's some people that aren't so great. Um, but if you can get into a class with someone that casts and can get you in front of a mic and get you gigs, I think that's a really nice way to go. Well, I'll tell you, I think there's there's a lot of people in the in the chat room now that really uh, 
you know, uh, they, they, they love you working. It seems like it's, it's a, it's a path that they'd kind of want to, uh, want, want to get into. So, uh, uh, I'll tell you what, it's it's very it, it's very interesting. Me and Brian actually were hanging out. Who were we hanging out with uh the other the other day when you were down here in, in South Florida? The uh, uh the oh, guy that's uh, the voice of the crypt keeper. Um why am I blanking on his uh, name? Uh, what? no no. No, what? John Kasir. Yes. Wait. Crypt keeper voice. Right? I'm right. I believe so. What I didn't I couldn't hear. What it right. what didn't tell me what she said. I couldn't hear it. John. Uh, John, John's very helpfully saying like what she said was right. It sounded right to me. John Kasser. There you go. That's right. Yeah. Uh, but it, 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 it's funny that, you know, how much, uh, you know, that there is this, we were talking with him about how much there is this, you know, this, this group, this like sphere of awesome voice actors that there's a reason why you know, your guys' IMDBs are just so long and epically awesome because, well, because uh, you guys I'm keep talking. working on all, all the same, or all, you know, different, different stuff because you have such a great <laughs> reputation. That's the thing, too, is also um, versatility. You know, if you can change your voice and manipulate your voice and do a bunch of different characters and you're not afraid to look silly, like, I don't always look so cute <laughs> doing certain character voices. Um, yeah. And if you're really um, able to play around and change your voice and manipulate your voice and do different accents and be willing to learn how to do different accents or impressions, it's really a plus. I'll often meet people that say, Oh, I really want to do cartoons. People tell me I have a good voice. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. It's not about having a cuckoo voice. Yeah. You know, it's about acting and bringing it to the table. And if you only have one voice, I'm not saying that it's impossible to have a career, but the people that are versatile will definitely work more within the animation industry, within that core group of people that you see all the time. I'm sure, you know, when fans, it's so nice now with social media and the internet because. I'm sure when animation first started, people didn't know how to connect with their favorite voiceover actors. And now someone can say, oh, I really love the voice of Bubbles or Buttercup. Who does that? And they can find out who who does those voices and follow those people. And they can see how versatile people are. And they're like, oh, my God, that I can't tell you how many times I get your Terrence from Foster's Home and Bubbles on the Fairly Odd. Like, you know, all these different um, sort of ranges and character voices that people are, you know, like like on your chat when you didn't know who Truffles was or Omi was, they knew. <laughs> oh God, yeah, no, I'll tell you what we uh, the, the 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 chat room experience on this show. Yeah, we we have a very we're lucky enough to have a very dedicated and loyal fan base, but uh, we dev- it's very rare that in our chat room, especially the unfiltered chat room, that we kind of get over overrun by anybody. But the Bronies came to play. God damn it! I Holy love the Bronies. The Bronies love- were killing it, uh, and and. Uh, you know, you, you definitely, it, it's, it's so interesting what you were saying about the different kinds of fan bases in between the video game stuff and uh, something with, with a, such a massive current cult following like uh, My Little Ponies has. Uh, it's, 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 it's really awesome to kind of see that reaction. They're asking me to thank them as, re- as a Raven. Oh, dude. I mean, yeah, I mean certainly. Yeah. You have to, they donated. Yeah, you have to. Well, I mean, only if everybody right. promises to go to tinyurl.com slash turkeynsfw, which, of course, donates money to the Hartman House, giving folks in Los Angeles on uh, Thanksgiving, the, the, the dinner that, uh, that they All need. Right, you can is, make it happen. This one, we got one tweet from the Hartman House saying uh, that the uh, uh, Thomas Deal deserves a shout-out because he, uh, he gave the $166 to take us over $1,000. Uh, I think we, think we plowed past that, but, but I don't know if you can give a shout-out to Thomas Deal. All right, this is Raven to Thomas Deal and everyone else that donated to Hartman House to feed the people that want to eat their turkeys. I mean, I don't really want to eat turkeys. I think it's disgusting. So hopefully they can also bring in some tofurkey. Nice. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Uh, and, and also uh, Benjamin Puga, P-U-G-A, donated $50. Is he a Raven guy? Uh, I don't know. It doesn't say here. I'm just getting the stuff uh, third hand here. Uh, so I'll I, rely on the chat room. Benjamin, what? P U G A. So I'm going to say P- P- Puga. Puga. Benjamin Puga donated some money too. Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, all right. Well, hey man. Uh, I guess uh, jo- Justin, I got to make it back uh, because we're, we're shooting scam school tomorrow. So I got to wrap things up. By the way, Butch said to say thank you and thank you to everyone and thanks to you guys. Dude, thank you a million times over. Butch is the best, and you're the best, and we appreciate you guys hanging with us. Happy one, toot, toot, toot. See you, one, toot. Do you 
remember toot. <laughs> it's so well, good to uh, see Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you again, uh, Tara. And, and, you know, listen, we have a, we have a very, very weird show. And uh, it, it's kind of <laughs> kept very weird, uh, you know, because sometimes it works and sometimes it's, you know, very, very awkward. So thank you for braving, uh, braving it. Everyone to do a recording for Penny. Oh, that's my daughter Penelope. So oh. uh, if if you could do a a, a, a Timmy voice, that would be, I think she would really dig that. But her name's Penelope, and uh, uh, and her sister is Josie, and Josie just had a birthday. Oh, how old did she turn? Uh, she turned Josie turned four, and Penelope is seven. All right. Well, does Josie like uh, Wow Wow Wubsy? Uh, well, I I know I definitely caught them watching Fairly Odd Parents last night. Cool. I wish Penelope's dad was just a little bit cooler. And Josie, happy birthday. I hope Cosmo and Wanda bring you some cool stuff. (laughs) Oh, my God. She is going to be so excited. That is awesome. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Tara. I'm going to go ahead and pack on up, but thank you, guys. Uh, That was a freaking blast. Uh, We'll see you tomorrow. And uh, if you're in the San Francisco Bay Area, why don't you come out and join us for Scam School Shooting. We're going to be at the Mars Bar tomorrow night. Uh, and I'm going to be in my house all day. So uh, if you're planning on robbing me, uh, don't try it because I'm here. A little more business yet to do. Oh, wait, what's left to do? Oh.